What's up, everybody? We're here with the Tarmac SLA Trey. Trey and Jesse. I'm here too. And we've both ridden this bike a little bit. Trey's ridden it more than me because somebody bought mine. I had the blue one. I also had the white one. Trey's got the purple one. And he's got the white logo decal wheels too. I was so jealous of that. Why don't they sell these more often? We both feel confident in talking about this bike. Trey is better at road bikes than me, so I'm gonna ask him some questions and he's gonna hopefully have answers for you. First thing we wanted to cover on this long-term review was the build. Build went as any other bike build does. It was pretty simple. One thing that you have to think about when building one of these up is your handlebar situation. Um, you have two options. You can go with the SL7 stem and then whatever bar you want or the new Rapide bar. And I had to go with the SL7 because there isn't an option to get this bar in the width in length that I needed. Yeah, which is kind of a problem with these cockpits. Cockpit also obviously has zero adjustment on it. So if you don't like the way this bend is, it is uh, gonna be a really, really expensive, bad decision, I guess wrong decision and i have a fairly standard size it's a 110 by 38 which a lot of guys run but you can't get these if you wanted to i actually think that a lot of uh, the manufacturers are kind of behind the times on this you are a like higher end domestic crit racer and one thing that i've learned from working with you guys is that the bars and stems everybody's running really narrow bars now with long stems and the cockpits don't they just don't come in the right sizes what like it seems like nobody's really running the cockpit the people i see running these cockpits are um actually non-racers for the most part in my opinion uh so i wonder if the, they'll catch up and make some new sizes on that or not but right now limited size availability is a big issue and also limited availability on those things i mean we can only get 44s right now yeah and that's it and like why i mean honestly that's probably the least common size i'm glad they make it but re realistically it's not a size that most people are buying Buying for an SL8. Since I've ridden this bar, I will say I did like it. it. It's not overly stiff, it's comfortable. I really love how tight the cables are to the stem. And whenever you, and if you watch our uh, SL7 versus SL8 video, you'll see how easy it was for me to route that. I would say this is a pretty solid cockpit. The only thing I don't think makes sense to me is everything's trending to narrow on top and wider on the bottom. This is this is equal distance. So if you're looking for a cockpit that has zero flare, highly recommend this one. It might be the only option you have realistically. I don't know of any other option. But if you like having a flare, um, I know I run my hoods a little bit in and it does kind of, it works, but it's not really designed to do that, to be completely honest with you. If, you're, if you can live with it and they have the size you want, it does look pretty cool on the bike. And that's where I want to lead into is that the tarmac stem is kind of interesting. This is for me aesthetically. I feel like they could have made this part not as flat. Honestly, to me, this looks like like an angler fish, like from like Finding Nebo, where it, like it's got a light bulb hanging off his head. Like seriously, that's what this reminds me of. It doesn't look terrible, but like, I don't know. I feel like they could have maybe made it more aero or made it look a little bit more aero at least. What do you think about it, Trey? I don't think it's terrible. The one thing I don't like about this is there's no option to run a non-specialized stem. Yeah, that is true. Very stuck in specialized lane here. Not that that's bad. Getting your hands on that stem is even hard. I You just had to eBay one to get one. We had to buy one off of eBay to build up a bike. For more, for more than MSRP too. Yeah. How comfortable do you think this bike is in compare or not in compare? How comfortable is this thing? You've put a lot more miles on it than me. The way I was able to set up my bars and stem, this bike is really comfy. I went with the zip bars, which are great. I love them. But the rest of the bike, the way it rides, I wouldn't say it's a comfortable bike. It is so stiff that it, it kind of beats you up. You feel all the road vibrations, all the cracks, all the bumps. Compared to other bikes that I've ridden, I feel like Specialized could have done a better job with the way this bike rides. You are able to run 32 mil tires, which is a plus, but if you're using this bike for racing, you're probably not gonna wanna do that for the added weight. Well, I also think that using tires as the making a bike comfortable is kind of a cop out at it the end of the day. Cause there's bikes out there that you can run 28s on so smooth. The main benefit of this bike being basically what I would call what everything Trey said is that it's it's one of the stiffest bikes I've ever ridden. No flex whatsoever. If you're trying to get up to speed really quick, 
I think this bike does it better than any of the other ones. I've never been on a bike that just moved as quickly as this does. Zero to 60 time, probably the fastest road bike you could buy. Six, yeah, going 60 miles an hour on this thing. We got the 54 tooth, it probably goes fast enough. <laughs> yeah. You've probably been 60 on it. Close. Close. Not quite 60. Not, not quite 60 yet. I mean, honestly, like, what's the aerodynamics like? Can you get so, to 60 miles an hour on this bike, Trey? We should talk about aerodynamics. Specialized had a lot of claims that this is a very aero bike and a very light bike. But we, we may have done some tests against other bikes uphill. <laughs> and the aerodynamics made this bike slower than heavier bikes. One thing I was noticing whenever I would ride this bike is that it felt immediately fast on the down pedal stroke. Getting it to hold its speed doesn't really live up to the marketing hype in my opinion. I, For me, I came off an SL7 and went straight to an SL8 and the difference between the two is so marginal in terms of the aerodynamic gains. I, I barely could even tell a lot of the time. I do believe that the SL8 is a better bike than the SL7 seven I think that if you are looking for like a pretty fast climbing bike that is kind of aero like yeah this thing's sick I'm just not sure that it's like the complete package like specialized really says it is I think it's a great bike the acceleration would make it a great crit bike so our phones both overheated and the batteries exploded it was too hot where we were filming so now we're just in front of the Jeffersonville store entrance and we have a vlogger to film us yeah Grace is so. here now <laughs> the bike handles not great. Not great. <laughs> not great. <laughs> oh my god. Kind of feels like your weight is forced over the front tire and they you're gonna wash out if you try to take a corner too fast. Descending, sharp turns, it's not great. Going uphill, it's really fun and lively bike to ride. Which is why I personally love the way this bike feels being so bad at riding road bikes downhill. Whenever I'm riding a road bike, I'm like excited about climbing. And this bike I thought was excellent at climbing. And I, it goes back to how stiff it is, the acceleration. Whenever like, whenever you're like, okay, I'm about to go sprint up this hill, you just feel like you're like that. It just wants to go. <laughs> goes, it goes like that. It goes. I, I just really, I'm not a big road bike guy, but like I do love sprinting up hills. This was probably the best climbing bike I've ever ridden in my life. Um, it, that guy had a tarmac. I don't know that guy. You don't know that guy, but he had a tarmac. Look at this list that Jesse made for us to talk about. What is that word? Comment down below. Huh? Comment down below. <laughs> Let's talk about gravel. Gravel, my favorite. The tarmac on gravel, honestly, is not good. It's so stiff, you just feel like it's gonna break, realistically. And you can't put big tires on it. So when it comes to getting your hands on a tarmac, availability and price point is really important. And to be honest with you, it's really hard to get one of these things right now. That is, unless you check out thebicyclestation.com, click the link below. Thebicyclestation.com reason why we have only frames is because it's cheaper to build this bike from a frame than it is to buy the complete. The complete cost $14,000 before tax. The frame set is 55. So that means that there's somehow 9,000 ish dollars of parts hanging off of that S works bike and people who might be good at math can do some math and figure out that there's not $9,000 worth of parts hanging off of those S-Works bikes. Is Specialized a scam? It's kind of a scam. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but like you can build an S-Works frame, the same frame that the Complete comes with, with all the Durace or SRAM Red parts for about $2,000 cheaper than you could buy it out of a box. I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense from a dealer's perspective either. It's much cheaper for us wholesale to build these bikes also. We, we didn't order a single S-Works Complete, honestly, because it doesn't make any sense, but if you bought one, like it is still cool. You can literally pick all these parts and figure out that it's way overpriced to buy it as a Complete. Makes no sense to me. And honestly, I guess they're sold out though, so they've gotten away with it um, at the end of the day. So they're the ones that are right. 
and we're just complaining for no reason. They sold out. To be honest with everybody, we are nitpicking a very amazing bike right now. There's a reason Specialized is Specialized. They make excellent products. This is an excellent bike. We are being real with all y'all about it right now. That does not mean we think it's bad. We just want to be honest with you about what's it really like to own this thing and what's it really like to ride it. The question is, what is the question? <laughs> Would you have one chance? If you could only have one bike to race and train on, would this be the bike? Well, that's your question. I actually that's... think I have a different answer, a different question than you. My answer to that question is, I think I would choose a different bike. I'm not gonna say what bike, but I think I would pick another bike over this one. And this is a racer perspective. I do a lot of training miles, and I do it all on my road bike on the roads. And comfort-wise, I would not choose this bike. I kind of have a little bit different opinion. This is the bike I'd want. I think it looks cool. It says S-Works. The colors are cool. It climbs really well. Honestly, when it comes to road bikes for me, the only thing that really matters is how good it climbs. If I'm not climbing, I might as well just be riding a gravel or mountain bike, to be honest with everybody. I really just don't ride road bikes that often. If I'm gonna go out and do a road ride by myself, I'm going to do that to go have some fun blasting up some hills. And this bike is amazing at that. I think this bike is easy to live with. There's very little maintenance things going on with it. The design of it is intelligent. Whenever you put the Rapide cockpit on it, it looks really cool. Unfortunately for Trey, he doesn't get to experience that. Mine looked really cool. I just sold all my road bikes for the winter because I literally will not ride a road bike for the next six months or something like that. But I've, I definitely could see myself grabbing an SL8 for my uh, 2024 road bike. Definitely enjoyed my time on it. I'm like a Cat 5 road racer. I don't even know if I even consider myself a Cat 5. I, whenever I think about like a guy like me looking at a road bike, I want something that looks cool, feels pretty fast, I'm not gonna use it that often, so as long as those two things are good, I'll be happy, and this bike did make me happy in that way. We talked about the good, the bad, the flaws. I don't know if you could call them flaws. I think there's some flaws, but again, I, I do think it's a good bike, and I wanna be clear, like we both think it's a good bike, it's just that we wanted to be honest about it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching on the videos. If you guys want to learn what we think about this bike in comparison to this other bike we've been talking about, stay tuned. It's coming real soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.